leadership skills are, where we fit on, yeah, where we fit on a scale of good leader, bad leader, where we fit ourselves and how we can also be leaders. And we're also going to understand the whole concept of leadership. And one of the things that we are going to see is leadership is not something that you're just given, but everyone can be a leader depending on where you are. Um, yeah. So let's get into it. Uh, before we start, does anyone wants to say anything, for example, qualities of a good leader? If there have ever been a leader before, or if not, have you ever had? What are some of the experiences that you've had with some of your leaders before? Oriad, Gilma, Emmanuel, does anyone want to say anything about the kind of leaders experience they had with leaders while they were the best or not the best? Okay. Um, um, okay so for me, I think one of the best leaders that, or the qualities that I that I've seen from the leaders that I admired were one who would always um, be act like a mentor and not just like a leader. So sometimes when you have, um, sometimes when you're new at a field and you're working under someone who's not who's had some experience, who's also a leader, they would not, um, they wouldn't mind sharing the ideas or giving you the what to do, what not to do. Um, and also they would put you in front of opportunities. If they, say, if they saw opportunities, they would give you, um, they would give good critique, whether it's positive or negative. Um, yeah, those are some of the qualities that I admired from good leaders. What are some of the qualities that you guys have seen from the leaders that you've interacted with? Okay, um, since no one wants to share, we can just continue with, uh, with, our, with our tutorial. So everyone has the capacity to be a leader. And when I say that, it means everyone is a leader in their own way. So it could be you're a firstborn or you have someone under you, or there's always someone who's looking up um towards you it could be you're working in a team and you're more you, you you have more skills than the others and if you also don't have more skills than the others there's one way or two that you can help um and there are some of the misconceptions that exist about being a leader um one of them is um so being a leader doesn't mean that you are so being a leader means you're not in charge really so it, it's not for you to boss people around to do tasks for you but instead you are responsible for everyone that you're in charge with so that means um you need to make sure that everyone has the capacity to deliver whatever they, they're supposed to be delivered and that could mean in terms of understanding where they are in terms of skills, what kind of skills they're, they're lacking, and how can you help them bridge that gap between where they are and where they're, they're supposed to be after. So it doesn't mean you're going to boss around everyone to tell them, do this, deliver this, this or that. We should always learn to be good leaders, 
and help in a way. Um, being a leader also means that you are in charge of a certain project, the deliverables, whether it's good or bad. And sometimes things may go right, and it's always good to appreciate the people who have helped you be, um, to, who have helped the project become a success. Um, so that means you appreciate the teamwork, you appreciate everyone's uh, efforts that they took to getting um, to getting the project to success. And when things go wrong, um, being a leader means you have to take that responsibility because you're the one who is in charge of the deliverables. And yeah, when things go wrong, you also take responsibility and understand where exactly went wrong who went, who did, who did what's not, and what's the gap, and how can you fix that? So the other thing is to also, as a leader, try to employ empathy. So you have to, and you have to be concerned about human beings and not just judge humans by their output, but instead um, their emotional being, their mental health, um, their physical health, everything. So you have to also take into account that because if you have someone who's working under a lot of mental pressure or emotional pressure, the output could not be um, as good as someone who feels comfortable uh, all around. Um, the other thing to being a leader is to create an environment where your followers or uh, the people from your team feel safe enough to say they need help or they made a mistake. So um, you always have to be considerate and also understand that every human makes mistakes. It's normal. So you have to be accommodative in a way, uh, but also not too accommodative because then people can lag a bit, but also create that safe environment such that um, I know we've experienced some leaders who are very harsh and judgmental, and if you do anything, you would probably um, you would probably just be very afraid to go tell them that you did wrong. But a good leader is someone who, when someone from the team does anything wrong or feels insufficient in a way, they can feel comfortable uh, for you to tell them what's wrong. Because when you know what's wrong, um, chances of you approaching the solution will be much better than the other way. So the other thing about being a leader, the whole concept of being a leader is, um, so you have to first understand how to better lead yourself before you lead others. So I know we've also noticed that we as humans, we tend to follow or yeah, we tend to follow people who are more successful in areas that we feel we want to be. So it's very hard for you to follow someone whose vision, qualities, or even output doesn't really, um, doesn't really, is not really where you're supposed to be. So um, for you to become a good leader, have people follow you, you have to spend at least 40% of your time in leading yourself, understand yourself first, grow yourself, um, hit your goals. And that could, when, when we say leading yourself, it comes in three different, uh, the three different traits that you can have. And the first one is uh, being self-aware about your character and also do a lot of self-reflection in terms of what did you do right, what did you do wrong, and also do some self-regulation. That means um, that just means reframing yourself on a scale of one to ten. Um, how exactly do you react to certain situations when things happen? So when we talk about self-awareness, we're talking about um, understanding exactly on a scale of good to bad where you lie as a leader. And this could be a small exercise could be thinking about um, could be thinking about the kind of leaders that you've had before. So think about the worst leaders or people who you felt were not really good leaders. Um, look at the traits 
there is something exactly this there are some traits that they had that made you think that this is not a good leader and um so the self-awareness is really thinking about on a scale of one to five of these qualities that i have seen from this first day do i possess any of those traits and if yes um what are the steps that we are supposed to take to improve or become a better leader in a way and the other part is sorry the other part is to also think of the best leader that you've had um or that you've experienced before think about um the traits that they had that made them a good leader and also think about uh on a scale of one to five if you possess this um trait if you do possess this the good traits that this person had then that means that you're a much better leader and you should also keep improving the good traits that you have so for you to become a leader the first thing is to ensure that you yourself are a good leader and that means being more aware about where you lie on a scale of good to bad leader um the other thing is doing self-reflections so in as much as you're more aware of the traits that you have not every day things will turn out the same some days could be um some days could be tough or agitated and you might be you might encounter some tough situations that could make you um that could make you do certain things or react in a different way so every single day it's important for you to think about um how exactly would um so if you find yourself in these tough situations how think about how exactly a good leader would react in certain situations and then think about um how you yourself reacted was it good was it bad how did how did it affect other human beings did it make them sad or angry in a way and also think about how a good leader would handle such challenges and you can also self-reflect and the next time you probably face the same situation you'll be at a better place and understand how to better react and that's all in growing ourselves so being a leader means you're aware of who you are you reflect on the actions that you've had towards yourself and towards other people as well and the other thing is practicing self-regulations so sometimes as leaders if you're leading a team things don't always go very okay so sometimes once someone could experience a big bug that takes them a week to complete another one could have done better and you're you're working on time um or sometimes systems crash and it's a member of your team so how exactly do you react to such situations instead of scolding this one person try to also be part of their solution so be part of their solution be part of a solution to your team's problems instead of being so harsh towards them so ask yourself um and also think about how you react to it so if it's a bug that has been if it's one person who has experienced a certain bug and it's preventing the whole team from moving forward think about it on a scale of one to ten how exactly is that important at this particular moment if it's important can you get the whole team to kind of help uh, the situation if it's not really important um you don't need to react in a bad way and sort of offend the other person's feelings because that would also kill their drive and motivation so always try and regulate ourselves look at how we react to certain situations and how those situations affect other human beings as well because you're working in a team um so another thing that we should look at is um understanding the leadership problem so according to last this is someone um this is one of the speakers from tedx and he divided the leadership problem into three things so as a leader the main problems that they face is they always feel like they have a very little time to achieve their goals 
and then they also have the people to manage and people sometimes can be hard to manage and there's also that power that comes with being a leader so if you're a leader um you kind of feel some you feel some some you feel some kind of this this power to being a leadership you feel some kind of um Oh, I'm just seeing Emmanuel's um, message right now on Kuma Sankara. I've never heard of him. Um, but yeah, maybe you could write, you could also write down in the chat box um, what you think of him as a leader, if he was a good leader or a bad leader, if he was either, what, what are the certain traits that made him a good or a bad leader? Um, we'd love to hear that. Thanks for sharing. Um, yeah, so leadership comes with power. So you feel like you have power over all those people. Your decisions matter, your actions matter. Whatever you choose matters to not just you, but to everyone you're in charge of. And power can be good and also bad. So you've also seen some people who um can be drunk of power and i say drunk of power is you have gained so much power you're in charge of so much people you feel very powerful to the point where you really don't care about your people so much so you start to do um yeah so when you're drunk in love you misuse your power so uh, because you can take um yeah i one example would be to think about the different political um, leaders. So maybe things like misusing tax, or that's an example of misusing power. Um, but when it comes to the team also, when it comes to managing a team, you have power over 10 people, 10 different people doing the same assignment. So someone who's drunk in power would assign all the tasks to all the team and then just stay there um, expecting to see the work done instead of being a part of the solution, like helping out, um, find solutions to the different problems. Um, so that's the difference between, yeah, that's the one of the problems that come with it. How exactly do you manage that power that comes with leadership? So as a good leader, we should try to manage our power well, use it for the people instead of being drunk in power. So the other problem is a people problem. So you have to understand exactly how to manage people. You have to understand the different personality traits that exist in among your team members, understand um, exactly what kind of management style works for them. Um, and avoid things like uh, micromanagement or yeah things that just don't make your team members feel comfortable or you don't make a safe space for them. Um, the other thing with leadership or that comes with being a leader is feeling like you don't have enough time to do everything that you need to. But that's why you always have a team working with you to help you achieve whatever you need to achieve. So, yeah, that's those are the three problems according to Lars on um, the problems that leadership uh, comes with. So, just some tips to manage people as a leader. So, managing people is something. It's a soft skill that you really need to learn because throughout your career life, you're going to be working with people. And that means understanding your teammates, understanding what makes them happy, understanding what irritates them. And the goal is to always try and ensure that you're not um, you're not making a negative impact on your team member. You're trying to be supportive, to grow together. And that could involve things like reflective listening. So um, 
look at uh, yeah that could involve things like reflective listening so always try to hear the opinions of others if it's maybe you're trying to solve a certain problem and your team or one member of your team wants you to follow this other route and you feel like this other route follows so it's a bad leader would just stick to whatever uh, decisions they make without listening to the team members ideas or views so it's important when you find yourself as a leader it's important to listen and reflect on your ideas from from your team the other thing is to also um assert yourself understand yourself very well and also understand how you react to certain things how you are as a leader and also the other thing is you have to understand how to manage people with different levels of skills so if you're so you could find someone who's like a senior senior development and someone who's just a beginner the way you manage both people could be very different a senior person doesn't need to be managed around they know exactly what they're doing they know exactly how to do it they probably have more experience which makes them qualified for a certain role or level so um understand that that person doesn't need to be micromanaged a lot but someone who's like a beginner um they want a lot of support so it's always good to check up on them listen to what how they're doing understand exactly what the, the blockers are the challenges they're facing and all those things and then and a good leader would encourage people to share their ideas some um yeah some people could be um yeah some people could could be having yes, to help improve the, to help improve um your project or your team process or whatever but it's but they sometimes could they have a, a passive uh, personality trait that means they don't speak out a lot so it's good to encourage people to share their ideas where how they feel about the ideas that you give encourage that feedback because um not not all there's no problem in this world that can be figured out by one person and problems are not experienced by just one person it's experienced by everyone so the more the ideas the better your solutions could be and as a leader you should try and motivate your team make them feel motivated make them feel happy to work in whatever project and this could be in different ways you could always appreciate their effort always um yeah appreciate their effort do it in buildings for them uh, encourage them give them gifts cards and whatever if they perform well all those things and then um, you also need to understand how to navigate rivalry between your team members um, rivalry is something that happens very often in in work in our place uh, but we have to ensure that you understand when rivalry exists and how exactly can you manage both rivalries. And the other thing is to be confident in yourself. I don't think we as humans are enticed to follow someone who doesn't feel confident in themselves. So you have to feel confident yourself for, and others, other people can sense um, the energy that you walk around with, whether you're confident or not confident, others can sense, and confidence is always very attractive. Um, yeah, so there are different leadership skills. Um, yeah. Yeah, so there are different leadership skills that exist, and this could be, um, and this this is all rounded. It's not just in an organization. It could be even in when you talk about leaderships in in governments, in charge. Um, yeah, so 
basically we have different types of leaderships and it's important for us to understand the different types so for example aristocratic um, it's normally just a small group of individuals um, often from privileged backgrounds and they always hold so much power and make decisions for a group that they lead um, so yeah and the other thing is um, democratic uh, bureaucracy or leadership and that's like the power that's distributed among the different elected representatives uh, who make decisions on behalf of other people that they represent and there's always like a system or rules and procedures that they have to follow an example of democratic um, leadership would be in in government and then we have the charismatic leadership which is which relies um, on the charm that someone possesses if they have a good vision that could also motivate you to see where you're going and they would want they would make you to feel inspired to uh, to follow you or yeah kind of motivate you to achieve a certain goal um yeah and then we have the bureaucratic system which is basically it's 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 more of um yeah the whole idea of bureaucracy is when, yeah, for example, democratic bureaucracy is when, um, yeah, for bureaucracy, I think of democratic bureaucracy, and that's where uh, certain people are, are elected to represent um, a certain members of team or organizations in sort. Um, so it's good to understand the leadership, the different leadership styles. And I think charismatic, a charismatic leader is one of the best leaderships um, that you may have. You lead with charm, with confidence, with a vision, with motivation. Um, the team really enjoys working with you. They want to be like you. They inspire you. They motivate you. Um, I know you can think of someone like Sam Altman, um, just from his vision, from what he has achieved. Um, you can also look at uh, from his videos how he encourages people to keep building in tech that a lot of people tend to follow him and admire him and they're more motivated by him. Um, so that's for, for me, I would think of him as a charismatic leader. Um, so this is the last bit um, on how how you inspire action or how you motivate people so we have a and this could be in what how what of why how and what of like the common values so the why exactly is why exactly should you motivate others so it could be you have a vision and you want to build this thing and you have to kind of get the whole team to be on the same boat as you. So say you want to build a spaceship to Mars, how exactly do you motivate people to come and join you? And
Sorry, um, apologies for that. My internet dropped for a bit, but I'm back. I hope you can hear me. If you can, please thumbs up. Bungie. And for Emmanuel Terefe, if you had left something in the chat, I think now it has all disappeared. So if you had, yeah, maybe just please copy paste it again. We'd love to hear your ideas about Thomas in a way. Cheers. Sorry. Um, I'm sorry, but just if you had that. Uh, yeah, it was just an extraction. But yeah, how exactly do we as leaders um, inspire action or motivate people to join in? So it could be you're telling someone, okay, let's go build, let's go plant 100 acres of maize. And no one is really interested. Why? Because they, they're not really into farming. So that could be uh, you have to find someone who shares common values and beliefs. And that can be, and that person has to be teachable in a way. So for you to inspire action, uh, you forcing someone to go and grow 100 acres of maize, even if it's going to be very profitable, um, they're not really going to be motivated because it's not really something that they are into. The other thing is also, as leaders, we need to show loyalty to the people, to our team members. So if, we, if a team member lacks that trust or loyalty in you, that could kind of demotivate them. But it could be that uh, maybe you promised um, this, certain thing when they finished or when they achieved a certain goal and then when they did you don't um you don't really uh, stick to your promises that could kind of kill the trust and loyalty between you and it would not motivate them to work next time so always ensure that you try everything to not break that trust or loyalty between them and trust is a very important thing in business uh, the other thing is to always lead with empathy, so try and be good humans and um, ensure that you try as much not to hurt anyone's feelings because that could also demotivate them in a way. And then the sense of belonging, um, people need to feel um, that they belong as a family or, yeah, they, they feel they need to feel that sense of belonging between or in, yeah whenever they're working or in a team so it's important to listen to different people's ideas so no one's idea feels left out and yeah they can feel like they're very comfortable in that uh group um so i'd like to close with a quote leadership is not about titles positions or flowcharts it's about the kind of influence you leave, the impact that you leave. Um, and another quote that I could think of is people won't remember what you did, uh, but they would always remember how you made them feel. So it's. In, I hope that we continue influencing each other in a positive way, in a very uplifting way, in a very motivating way, encourage people, motivate them. Um, yeah. And I think that's, that's all from the tutorial. So, yeah, if we look at the careers challenge for this week, it's more of a reflective challenge. So uh, we're going to really do some reflection in our reflection, think about what makes um, a good leader, a bad leader. We're going to do some reflective um, we say journaling or um, ourselves. So we're going to do some self-awareness um, exercise. Think about who you are, recognize certain traits that you see in a good leader and also in a bad leader. And yeah, that will be on task A. And task B 
could be uh, test view will be a scenario in a project uh, if you're a lead, because we're all uh, the reason why we're doing leadership skills is because we might someday find ourselves in leading a group of people and we need to understand how exactly to manage people, how to be a better leader and understand the different management styles from different people. So you have a scenario and a few certain questions and you can submit your answers as a report or a PDF, whichever you prefer, and upload a PDF or you can upload a link to your Google link and once you upload your Google link, make sure you have granted view access so we can create it. Um, yeah, that's all. I hope this was useful. Does anyone have a question so far? Okay, I will take that as a question. And I hope you all have an amazing Friday evening and enjoy your weekend. And uh, let's keep learning. And congratulations for making it this far. I hope you're learning. And learning is always good. I hope you're improving skills. And yeah. congratulations and all the best. Bye. Thank you.